Hello, welcome to Cloud Seminary Plus. Today we'll, we will be doing a Bible study into the text of Exodus 16, 4 to 6. This Bible study can also be used in conjunction with our course that we're offering, BT005, God, Christ, Man, and the Covenants. In the future, this will also be tagged to several other courses, including a course on the law and also the kingdom. So let's go ahead and open in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you into your presence today, and we want to declare that you are our Lord, you are the Lord, the creator of the universe, you are above all things, you are the eternal God. Father, as we look at who you are and what you've done, we, we recognize that we are sinners, we're fallen creatures, we're surrounded by sin, born in sin, our, our parents committed sin and we, we have the guilt of Adam, our forefather. But we're so thankful for you sending your son, Jesus Christ, the eternal son of God, to be our mediator, to save us from our sins, to live a perfect life, to secure for us a righteous status forevermore in your presence and to be declared righteous in your courtroom. So Father, as we study this incredible passage of scripture, Exodus 19, four to six, I ask that you'd give me strength and understanding to, to clearly present the truths that are being taught, to expound the word, not for my glory, but for yours. Father God, I ask that the students would receive it and that we would put aside our traditions and maybe our preconceptions of what, what uh, the old covenant is or what it ought to be, and that we would submit to these truths if it is indeed your word. Be with us now. We ask a blessing upon this time. May your spirit fill us and fill each one who's watching live or delayed in your son's precious name our mediator the mediator of the covenant jesus we pray these things and also through the power of the holy spirit amen okay so let's go ahead and we're going to get right into the uh to our workshop our bible study today and so before we begin before we read the text let me just bring us over here for a moment so we have three places here where we're really sharing content so what I'd recommend is if you go here to, to our homepage here, so you can click on cloudseminaryplus.org, and then you come down to Bible studies. We click on Bible studies. The Bible study here is already available. So if you click on start Bible study, there's a page. So we have the text here, and then we'll be adding the work, the mark, the scripture markup worksheet. We'll add this video later. We'll add the questions as well. And so this page will really allow you to get the the content, the handouts, so that you can do your own investigation, especially the markup worksheets. Over here in the middle of the screen, we have Interpreting the Word YouTube channel. And so we'll create a playlist with the, with the several videos that we're making today, and you'll be able to access each of those videos. And then to my right here, we have, this is on Facebook, Interpreting the Word Study Group. You can access this, and we'll also share content in that study group on Facebook. So send us a private message to request access. You can also just search that Interpreting the Word study group and then request access. And later, we're adding this to our our class, BT005, God, Christ, Man, and the Covenants, this is part two. And so we actually have a classroom as well. And so if you want to sign up, you can enroll. So if I just come back to here, and if I go into courses. You can see that the course is already the page is up. And so just come down here and you can enroll for the course. So these are just several introductory comments before we, we get into our work, our, our, our workshop, a Bible study uh, today. So let's, 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 let's go ahead and let's get into it. And so we're looking at a, we're doing a brainstorming observation and questions. I want to just talk for a moment. I want us to do a brief uh, brainstorm breakout session, just really setting the table for us, discussing and thinking about issues surrounding the text, issues surrounding covenant, issues surrounding old covenant, new covenant, redemptive history, what what it, how, how it's taught in today's context, in today's church, how it's not taught. Let's just do a brief session unpacking these things. So I'm going to go ahead and um, just move this over here. Okay, that's great. So what we're going to do over here now is we're just going to 
we're going to discuss what is going on in contemporary Christianity concerning covenants. And so if you have your own, if you're taking notes. And so we want to ask, we want to ask questions. We want to make observations concerning covenants and especially the old covenant is taught today in the church in your contemporary church i do we've already done one of these workshops so i do have the students responses so we'll just talk through some of these things things that i've noticed as i've been in in multiple and different church contexts and and maybe perhaps uh, you've noticed these as well so these are these are my observations and then observations from students uh, one one comment was we never talk about it. So that's one that's one comment concerning someone's experience in the church, and I, and I think that's accurate. I've been in churches that I've served, and some talk about, it, some teach on it, others don't. Some people will say that this the old covenant. We'll just say OOC equals the Levitical law. Therefore, it's not binding. So that's, yeah, wow, that, that is, that is a position. And we want to, we want to look at that. We want to consider that closely. And so a famous preacher in U.S. context who, who shall remain nameless literally said we should unhitch OT from the new T. So this is this is this is typical. This would not be an exemption, but probably a, a norm in our churches. Another comment or question that we want to think about is the relationship between the the three aspects of the law. Now, some people will deny this exists. I shouldn't say some. Many many do. You have moral, ceremonial and civil. Other people will talk about how this is this is only a type is only a shadow or type containing nothing eternal or very little eternal. Now maybe they would say a a, a small aspect is eternal but functionally they're saying that it does not contain anything eternal. Let me just adjust this here. What else do we have here? Uh, another another very common th a common theme is that the there's two plans. There's literally two plans by God, two different peoples. So we can talk about there are two plans. Two covenants, two peoples of God. All right, so um, wow, that is that's very strong. So I think I think this is pretty good concerning issues. Uh, I think this is really true. People just don't talk about it. They're afraid to preach or teach. I would say this: pastors and leaders do not teach direct commands from the OT. I think the table is set there that really gives us a context for us to discuss. And so maybe you're you're in one of these, you're in what you you've experienced this before. And I really haven't, we're going to discuss and work through a solution. And so the the teaching that we're going to be coming from today is not original to me. You know, this is not this is not original to me. I've really highlighted a lot of the discontinuity and 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 struggles in the contemporary church just to really kind of set the table and to give us a reason and a desire to to really do this study here. And so there is there is a lot of teachers that also teach biblical truths. I don't want to minimize that, but the reality is is that this what what, what I'm saying here these are these are really um I would say uh this is contemporary issues. These are contemporary trends. And these are issues in the church. If your church does teach on the covenant, they are they are teaching a lot of continuity, then then this probably doesn't apply to you. So I just want to really set that off as a caveat. 
So let's go ahead now before we actually unpack the text. The, the plan for, to, for today are, is going to be this, just to kind of set the context. We've just completed the, brain, the brainstorm and just a, a discussion on introductory issues. We're going to, to read the text, to find a solution, to hear the, what the Word of God has for us, and to allow the Spirit to work in our heart, to open our eyes, to, and to give us ears to hear, and to change our heart, to conform our heart to the image of God which will affect our, our actions. And after we hear the word of God, then we're going to do a structural analysis. So we're going to work through a structural analysis. So I have the Hebrew here. So if you don't know Hebrew, that's totally fine. You should be able to easily follow along. We'll have the English on the left. The Hebrew will be on the right with English underneath. So you don't have to know Hebrew. But the benefit of using Hebrew is that I've just gotten caught so many times just using English and then students will ask questions, and as it turns out, there's a mistake or there's debate in the English, and I've just been caught. So moving forward, we're going to always we're, we will always use the English, uh, the Greek, and the Hebrew, and so that when there is an issue, we, it's not coming across as if we're making mistakes or if we're trying to confuse. We want to say that the English translations are accurate, but they're not perfect. There's always something lost in translation from Hebrew or from one language to another, Hebrew to, Hebrew to Greek, Hebrew to English, Greek to English. And at the same time, there is, there is an accuracy and perspicuity of the, Engl of the English text so that it's understandable and it's true. But we don't want to overstate that. Our, our confession says that it's in the autographs and it's in the original languages where the inspiration and infallibility is derived. And then we would also say in the preservation of the word through the body of manuscripts, God has supernaturally kept the word. And then we finally have English <clears throat> and translations in, in various languages. Those are accurate, but they are fallible. And so after we do a, so, so what we'll do is we'll do a structure analysis. And then after a structure analysis, we're going to do an exposition, just go word by word, phrase by phrase, talk through the text. And then we're going to look at fulfillment. We're going to look at the broader context of, of Exodus because we want to see that this is really a summary statement of the Old Covenant, and we're looking at questions concerning substance. Is it eternal? Is it just a type? So that kind of that's the issue that's coming into play. Is it merely a type, or is there is there fundamentally an eternal aspect to the Old Covenant? We'll, we'll look at that, the Old Covenant in relationship to the Mosaic. We'll look at the Old Covenant in relationship to the Abrahamic Covenant, also pointing forward to the to the Davidic covenant and then also to the new covenant. So so we'll go from an exposition of what the text says, looking at its broader context in Exodus, then looking at at the biblical theological framework or his redemptive historical framework. And then we're going to look at we're going to then highlight covenant emphases and in the text, all the different covenants that are present or implied. And finally, we'll look at an exegetical outline and big idea. So this is going to be a lot. There we will create several videos for you to watch. You can watch each video depending on your interests. And then there is, we can even discuss other aspects. So, so our focus tonight will be more on the covenants. This is a primary covenantal text, but you can also, you could also use this for looking at the kingdom theme. And so even that we'll touch on the kingdom theme, but for sure we could add videos later that really unpack kingdom. We can also, this is a primary text for looking at salvation as well. Everything's interrelated, and so we, we're just going to slowly build, add additional videos as we move forward. So let's go ahead now and let's read. Let's hear what the Word of God says. We want to submit ourselves to the Word of God, and then we're going to do a structure analysis and then an exposition of the text, and then give you some summary statements. So that's really the big movement, and then within exposition, we'll we'll do the various aspects of what the text says and means. Hear now the word of the Lord. On the third moon, after the people of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, on that day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. They set out from Rephadim and came into the wilderness of Sinai, and they encamped in the wilderness. There Israel encamped before the mountain, the mountain of God, while Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him out of the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the people of Israel, you yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples, for all the earth is mine. 
and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. The flower fades, the grass withers, but the word of the Lord shall stand forever. This is the word of the Lord.